So I'm going to show you a different variety of bowls that you can make using the same idea of using a template. Um, this is a template that I printed off of a website called imadeapot.com um, and there's a link to that website with I mean, literally hundreds of different styles of templates and for sure you can make your own. Um, it might be an easy way to start um, and get some ideas flowing but I'm going to show you how to make a bowl using a template like this. And then I'm going to show you how to make a bowl with a bowl. Um, and this is going to be using a slump mold because I will slump the clay inside. So that's another way of doing it. Um, the process is basically the same. I need to roll out a slab. Um, so I'm going to go roll out a slab and I'm going to come back um, and show you how to put this one together. So I have rolled out a slab. Okay, and it looks like it's going to be about the right size. I did use the slats again. Um, but like I said, you don't have to have the slats, okay? So I'm going to try to get this fit the best I can. I'm going to cut out the extra parts. And remember, we're going to want this to dry, okay? Um, because it's going to be really flimsy and it's not going to want to stay together, okay? So this is going to be extra, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. Um, but I'm going to transfer this to a piece of paper, and I'm going to smooth it out and get rid of the texture from the canvas. Okay, and we will come back and we will assemble it once um, it's dried a little bit and I can cut it. Um, because it's probably going to take about two hours to get it to that really soft leather hard where I can still bend it without it cracking, um, but it will be strong enough to support itself. So when you're working with a slump mold, you're going to work a little bit differently. Um, we want to work with it, the clay when it's really plastic. And the reason for that is we want it to be able to completely fill this form. So I'm going to cut off my extra. I might actually cut a pleat into this as well. Okay. And I'm going to wind up scoring that together again, but I want to fill this void. And I'm pressing to fill that space, okay? And you can see where I'm going to need to score. And I'm ultimately going to need to remove clay too. But I first want to really get close to completing this. Um, and yes, I'm going to have to get rid of my fingerprints too. I'm going to worry about that though when... Um, things dry. Remember, we want to wait until things are leather hard to get rid of marks. So I'm going to score, okay, both sides. And the reason why I have saran wrap inside the bowl, between the clay and the bowl, is that's going to be the release agent. Just like we use newspaper for um, the mug, we're going to use saran wrap for the release agent for this. Now I've got a big overlap, so I'm going to trim a little bit off. Okay. I'm going to continue to press this around make sure I have that whole shape and form. Okay, and I'm going to just kind of clean up some more of this. And I'm just doing a real rough cut just to get the excess off. All this is going back in my bag. Okay. So I'm going to use a rib to clean that up while it's plastic and I, because I want to really get rid of that extra clay. 
and I want to get rid of my fingerprints as well. Um, notice that I'm still kind of putting marks in, so it is a good idea to let this dry, but I want to get it kind of on the way. And this is also, this rib, since it's soft, is allowing me to kind of conform to the bowl. Okay. And like I said, this is going to firm up and I'm going to do a lot of cleanup. Um, more than likely with the same rib. Okay, rough cleanup, yeah? Um, all right, now I'm gonna do a nice job pulling this back. And getting it out of the way, because I'm gonna cut it along the rim, and I don't wanna get that stuff tangled up in my cut. So I'm gonna cut right to the rim of the bowl that exists. And once again, I'm gonna come back when this is firmer and do a better job cleaning it up. So we're going to push that off to the side and we're going to let it dry. Ultimately, I let this sit overnight, wrapped up. Um, and this is a soft leather hard, which is going to be good for what we're going to do in terms of making a slab bowl. So I have my template and I'm going to cut. Now I'm going to try something a little different in regards to just cutting a round edge. I'm going to do this one round, this one round, and on this one I'm going to cut a little bit of a wave just to see how it comes out. Um, honestly, I've not made a bowl using this template before. I've seen pictures of them and I, mean, I, have the, I know how it goes together, but it'll just be interesting to play. And I think that you should allow yourself that flexibility in your work. I mean, if you have a solid idea of like, this is what I wanna have, then you should follow that. But sometimes it's nice just to let your imagination play and see where it takes you. So. All right, and I'm gonna repeat that on this side. Okay. All right, so hold on to that one. Um, I also have my slump bowl here um, and I can start cleaning it up. And like I said some before, sometimes your th fingers are the best tools because they can bend and fit 
where ribs and other tools don't. This is still quite plastic compared to this. Um, and I think that's probably because the paper absorbed a lot of moisture from here where this is sitting in plastic wrap. Um, so it stay, you know, kept the, a lot of the moisture intact and nothing evaporated out or not as much. So this is still pretty plastic, but I'm just going to try to smooth stuff. And you saw before where I did it with the rib. I mean, ultimately when it comes to using tools, you want to use what feels comfortable for you and what works for you. Um, and everybody's a little bit different and that's okay. So, I'm gonna let this dry a little bit more as I'm working on the other bowl. But I really do like working with multiple things at a time because I find that while one thing's really wet, I can work on the thing that's dry and vice versa. So, I'll let that sit for a bit. Okay. Um, this is going to go together pretty easy. Um, all we have to do is really slip and score and bend and attach. Okay. So um, I'm going to score on the inside of one and then on the outside of the other. And you'll see what I mean in a second. I'm trying to create, trying to keep symmetry. So what I do on this side, I'm going to do on this side. Now I'm going to score here. Okay, so you can see that's the score mark. Score, score. Okay, and we'll flip it back over. I did not do a good job cleaning up yesterday, so I should have washed out my brush. As long as you slip one side really well, it will be enough for both, depending on how dry your clay is. Um, I think this is going to be okay. I would have liked to have caught this slab a little earlier because it is um, it's almost a little too hard or too firm into you know coming out of plastic and entering leather hard. I'm afraid that if I really torque this thing around, it's going to crack on me. It's just at that kind of like almost screwed it up phase. Um, so I'm going to lift, I'm going to bend, and I'm going to compress. Now I'm going to try to compress hard enough that I get a good bond, but not hard enough where I leave a fingerprint. I still want to keep the seam, especially on the outside, because the seam on the outside is going to be a decorative element more so than the seam on the inside. Because on the inside, I'm gonna wanna try to get rid of it um, or um, bevel it so food doesn't get stuck. But on the outside, it's gonna be different. On the outside, it could become that, like I said, that element of design. Okay. And there we go. So what I can do on the outside, smooth it. I mean, I gotta clean up that stuff, but smooth it so that it looks
intended and you can't see any of those fingerprints and now I'm gonna add in a decorative element now you can use like almost anything for this this is where if you've created your own stamps that's can that could be really great um, if you don't have you know stamps you literally can use the end of the paintbrush and you totally do not have to do this but you know what you do you should repeat that could just be a nice little decorative element kind of goes with the wave as well because it's you know circular or soft okay and I'm trying to be mindful of the number and the spacing Okay, I'm trying to make sure that I have nice joints. I'm gonna come back. Now, with the mug, I waited to clean up, but since this is so close to being leather hard, it's gonna clean up a lot easier, and I don't have to wait necessarily an extra amount of time. So that cleaned up really well. I still want to make sure that I have beveled edges so nothing's too sharp, nothing causes something to chip. Okay, I'm going to do all of these and then I'll flip it over and kind of do it the other side. And if you notice, I'm always constantly cleaning my tool so that I don't put any marks in with the tool as I'm trying to take them out. Okay, now I'm going to deal with this side. Ah! Nuts. And this is where it would be better if I was left-handed, right? Okay. I mangled that one pretty good. Okay. Bevel it. Let's try to get this last one. And then we have to deal with the inside. And the inside is going to be more important, um, not necessarily as a design element, but because of what we talked about before and making things functional and not having areas where food can get stuck and can't get cleaned out. nicer all right and I can come back and take care of that okay so we do need to think about this inside part we need to think about whether or not we actually want to see this seam or we want to try to smooth over it I'm gonna go for the smoothing over it part um, and I'm gonna look for another tool um, ultimately I want to use this uh, sculptor's thumb but if you notice this one's got a chunk out of it, so it's not symmetrical, and I'm worried that that's going to make a mark as I try to smooth. So I'm going to look for another tool. Okay. So this one's a little bit different. It's got a, and it's got a chunk out of it too. All right. I think I can, I can live with that one though. I'm, I'm going to go this way, and I'm going to try to smooth over the seam and try to hide it. As, you know, as much as I can. Here we go. 
And you can see how I'm just really kind of blending the two together. So I'm compressing and kind of smearing it and trying to shallow out that edge. I think that's working. And I might have to come back. Um, I might have to fill sometimes, you know. Um, you might want to do that. Or just keep coming back and cleaning it up. But I think that is a I think that's better than having that in terms of worrying about food. Now, if you really want to, you could totally leave it as long as you clean it up and it can be cleaned like after use. So you need to think about that in terms of making functional wear. Um because you you might like that as a design element on the interior of your form. Okay. I'm not so worried about that. Or interested, maybe, is a better word. All right, that stuff I can clean up and get rid of later. So Now, I didn't do this with my mug, or you didn't see me do this with my mug, because my joint, remember, I pushed down using the salt container. And when I did that, it really kind of collapsed that leading edge of the of the slab so it really kind of disappeared on its own so i'm just trying to turn it around so i can get a little bit more leverage on it here we go and i'm trying not to deform my bowl at the same time And once again, like this is where craftsmanship comes in. This is where the eye of the person who's more experienced picks up on things that you might miss as, you know, a young potter artist because you're trying to just get the whole thing done, whereas a more educated eye and more master masterful hand is really looking at those little tiny details and they will spend the time to let this dry and come back and clean up these corners a little bit more okay and the other thing that comes with you know, experience is how much pressure to put on something, you know, how much is too much, how much dents it, how much removes the mark. And that's just one of those things that you have to learn the feel of the material. And you have to know how much is just the right amount. And that can be, it can take some time. All right. So I think uh, as a first cleanup that that's really good. Um, I do kind of like my wave and how I've alternated. Um, these are kind of cool. I, I think that if I had some other stamps available, they might be a little bit more in interesting, but you know, whatever. Um, I do need to come back and clean this up. I am going to let it sit and dry longer. Um, I want to make sure just like I did with my mug that I round off these edges because everyone likes to take a bowl to their mouth and drink the last of their um, chocolate milk left over from their cocoa pebbles or cocoa puffs or whatever. So it's re or soup. Right, so it's really important that you round off those edges. All right, so I'm gonna let that sit for probably another hour or two and then come back and clean it up again. I decided to completely cheat, so I am actually gonna speed this up by using my heat gun. Um, I want you to notice that as I cheat, I am trying to keep moving my bowl because I do not want to put a lot of stress on one section because remember as clay dries it shrinks so if you just kind of stick in one spot you're gonna put stress on the clay, clay and you can wind up making cracks so you do want to rotate okay and that also means that 
you also want to switch it and do the outside too. Okay, so either move your vessel with your hand or move the hair dryer or move the fan or a heat gun if you got a heat gun. This is going to already it's starting to work pretty quick. Um, it's already leather hard on the inside. So I'm going to do the outside really quick and then I will um, start doing a little bit more cleanup. And that's gonna use, I'm gonna use the soft rib, I'm gonna use a metal rib maybe, a little bit of sponge, a little bit of water, but I mean, I literally hit this for like two minutes and it's leather hard. And um, I'm gonna go wash my hands so that I don't put any marks into it um, with my hands, but they can work really great. You just have to be really careful because you could ruin your project and lose a couple hours worth of work if you're really aggressive with whatever you're using to speed things up. Whether it's a heat gun, hair dryer, or fan, make sure that you're constantly rotating your work. And if you notice, I got a little bit of a wobble here. I need to flatten out that bottom before it dries anymore. Okay. So I've got a smaller rubber rib. I'm going to try to use that to get out some of my fingerprints and some of the other marks. And when I'm doing this, I'm really supporting from the other side as well, so I don't stress the clay. So wherever I'm pushing, my fingers and hand are supporting it on the exterior side. And remember, when you're cleaning up, it's really good to go in multiple directions to try to get rid of any high point, low point kind of groove. And when you glaze stuff, sometimes glaze will also fill in some little marks. It really depends on the color and the opacity of the glaze. If the glaze is transparent, then it's going to be really hard to cover up any blemish because you'll see through the glaze. If it's a thick, opaque glaze, then you're probably going to be fine. All right. I do need to put my name in this after I finish cleaning up. And like I said, I usually what I do is I will clean up it leather hard to try to catch the big things, you know, um, especially something like that. Because once it's bone dry, there's no way that's coming out. Um, but this fine stuff, I will take care of when it's bone dry. I'll go over it with a damp sponge. I will burnish it a little bit more. Um, and if it's really something that's a little bit deeper, Hit it with a little you know, very fine grit sandpaper or, or like the scrubby from a sponge. Like this type of scrubby. Um, you can get them at the supermarket. I cut them up into little pieces. Sometimes they're green. Sometimes they're purple or pink, I should say. Um, the, and usually the color de denotes how you know scratchy it is. And whatever tool you use, you, sure, you want to make sure that you're not putting more marks in than you're taking out, right? getting there this is the one that I really butchered
Okay, so now I'm okay with all of that. I'm gonna focus now on the rim. Um, I'm gonna go over it first with this, just to try to level it a little bit. All right, and now I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of water. And I'm gonna round off and bevel those edges. And I did not get it soupy wet, so I'm not removing that first layer of fine particles. I'm just kind of making it plastic again. just beveling those edges because like I said I know and I think you probably do as well because you are someone who probably uses bowls as I do um, everyone likes to even when no one's looking slurp what's left by bringing the bowl up to their mouth Remember, like I said, I'm not saturating this. I'm really just bringing that leading edge back to plastic and rounding. Okay, to me that's good. I am going to let this dry down. This stuff here, this I can clean that up when it's a, a closer to bone dry. Um, so I'm just going to put my name on it and I'm going to let it dry down. I'm supporting where I'm stamping on the other side. Okay. All right. So that is the slab bowl and that's the slab mug. Yeah. All right. Let's finish up with the hump mold. Um, it's dried a little bit more, I might, just because I'm really not happy with the lumps and the bumps. I honestly do not do a lot of hump molds or slump molds. Um, when it comes to mold making, I'm usually doing a different style than either one of those. I usually do slip casting. Um, I usually don't use molds that frequently. So I'm just kind of like trying to get rid of a lot of the fingerprints that I put. All right, um, I'm gonna clean up the edge with a knife. Um, because I think that as I pushed down on stuff, um, I kind of changed the my original cut. And I really wanna make sure that I capture the true shape. Yeah, so I'm definitely have squished the edge out. Okay. So, ooh, yuck. That's why you need to clean your tools so you don't leave crap like that as you work. Really screwed that up. Okay, so the cool thing about a hump mold is that when it's dry, and this is really not dry enough to do this, but I'm gonna show you anyway, the plastic is going to allow you to pop this out. Now, you can see that this is still too plastic, um, but ultimately, I'm not gonna save this. This is just really for demo. Um, but you can see how not to do that, right? Um, I totally damage this. This is still too soft, right? But if you let that firm up to leather hard, it literally will pop out. And the reason why it will pop out is because it's shrinking inside. Okay, so it'll pop out. Um, but 
what you will have to do is you will have to peel this off and you're gonna have to deal with that exterior side just as I dealt with the other slab bowl. If you decide to do a hump mold, which is the reverse, okay, you're gonna want to cover this side in plastic and put it on this way. The problem with a hump mold is as the clay shrinks, if you don't catch it at the right time, it's gonna shrink so much that it'll actually crack along um, the bowl because the already, you know, whatever, whether this is plastic or ceramic like this, it's gonna crack because this won't shrink, but the clay is gonna shrink around it and it's gonna constrict and you'll get a crack. So be aware of that if you're gonna do a hump mold. I prefer slump because when it dries, it shrinks and it pops out. Okay, um, let me just show you one more quick, really interesting way of working with um, a slump mold. Um, you can use multiple pieces um, and you can create really pretty delicate things. Um, so you can do like the, pet the petal um, or leaves or even just regular shapes. So, you know, you can take your tool and you can even like hand carve these, right? But you can lay them inside and I'm going to rush to do this because I'm not going to keep it. And I think you can see where I'm going with this. Um, you would need to slip and score there. Okay, um, but this is just for, you know, kind of demonstration purposes in terms of, you know, giving you a different direction, a different idea. Okay. And like I said, you can, you don't have to do petals and stuff like that. You could totally do geometric shapes. I mean, it's really up to your imagination. Now, if, it's gonna, if this is going to be functional, then you're going to have to deal with those open spaces. And maybe that means that, you know, you, you overlap yet again, right? So that you don't have spaces like that. Okay. But theoretically, you could, you know, even come back in the center. This is a horrible circle because I am totally rushing. Um... And there's nothing wrong with doing finger slabs, right? But you can... There's a ton of different ways to work. And if you really get into this, then I totally would recommend that you go and look on YouTube for um, other artists, because there are people who are real big hand builders and specifically slab who do this stuff all the time and they have different techniques okay so you could do all those pedals um, and slip and score okay compress so that you've got a good joint and then when this firms up pop it out and you have a bowl that's you know a flower um, or you could do different geometric shapes and you just have to decide if it's going to be functional or not if it's going to be functional then you're really going to want to compress um, and you're going to want to fill in any void so food can't get out, right? But if it's just going to be decorative and like a piece of pottery that's going to sit in the center of the table, um, it, it doesn't have to have, it, I mean, it can have holes because it's not going to hold anything, right? So form or function, you have to kind of choose what you're going to do, okay? But like I said, when that dries, it'll shrink, you pop it out, and then you would peel off your plastic, and then you're going to have a bowl shaped like a flower or, you know, whatever design you put into it. Okay.